For four and a half years, the Adelaide Crows camp of 2018 has been a rolling story and a few more explosive chapters were added to it this week. Eddie Betts, Josh Jenkins, Bryce Gibbs all publicly spoke about their problems with the camp. The coach at the time, Don Pike, now an assistant under John Longmire at Sydney, spoke yesterday for the first time significantly. Oh, well, firstly, you know, um, to Josh and Eddie and Adelaide players and staff who are involved, you know, um, apologise for you know, the camp and it's, it's, you know, it's sad for me to see that you know, they're, they're feeling that way and um, acknowledge their hurt and I'm sorry. With Eddie and Josh, the fact that you know, they feel the personal information they provided was used against them is, is disappointing and that's, that's, you know, that's unacceptable and you know, we'd, um, so I'm, I'm saddened by that and sorry by that. It's a massive change of tune from Don Pike, who, as this story unfolded in 2018, guys, was very defensive about it and, in fact, said most of the reporting, in fact, all of the reporting about it has, was factually inaccurate. There was a famous or infamous press conference that he stood alongside, TJ, with Brett Burton of the Crows at the mm -hmm. time, defending it angrily mm -hmm. and, and aggressively. To see four and a half years later now the admissions there, I, I think personally it's the only way forward for, for him and anyone else attached to the footy club as to ha how they get themselves out of this mess that they have created and the hurt that they've caused so many people, which is now being articulated publicly on the record for the first time four and a half years later. Couldn't have been more genuine there, yep. uh, Don Pike. I think he's a good person, Don Pike, and maybe got swept up in it at the time, but now realises how wrong it was. Damo, another one is Mark Crescuto had some strong comments to say about yourself and Kane Corns back, and I want to get the response of what you think of these comments now, looking at what's come out in the past week. I think people like Kane Corns and Damien Barron, they're all searching for, they want a blow-by-blow blow account of what happened on the camp, and they're not going to get that. And the fact that players haven't come out and slammed it proves that most of them, <laughs> there's nothing to slam. They, they think there is, but there's not. Yeah, Dan, I guess it's hard for Mark Shudo to hear that now, I would think, um, considering some of the things that were said at the time, it's, it would be embarrassing for them. I mean, Taylor Walker's the same. They recommended that camp to their family and friends. Rory Sloan was the same. He said it made him a better person and teammate and, and son and all that. How you could read the blow-by-blow -blow account that we now have that Mark Rusciuto said we'd never get and recommend that to anyone mm -hmm. is, is staggering. But the legacy of the people that were there at the time and the board, a lot of board members still... There, how will it affect that? Well, they're meeting regularly now. They had a pretty big meeting to deal with this yesterday and, and they will formulate a, a public strategy around this. They need to and they now know that. Um, to your point, Lotto, what Don Pike said yesterday, that, that, that was really well done by him and, and I'm glad for him personally that he has actually now said that because the club got aggressive and it got aggressive personally about this and a lot of that aggression was directed at media. Now, Sam McClure took this story the whole way through, right to the very end. A lot of other media did to a point. Sam McClure took it all all the way, and, and he too has, has copped it. I mean, his own newspaper um, had an apology on his behalf, effectively, over his reporting of it. It's been made to be 100% true, and now that you've got three players of note, of significant note, going on record, now it is four and a half years later, but now they're going on record, and they're now the possibility of civil action being levelled against the club, that is a very real possibility now, and as such, the club does need to formulate, officially, publicly, a strategy to, uh, to, to wade through whatever lies ahead with it still. But what about the AFL? I mean, what does yep. it say about the in, well, their in investigation unit? I mean, like, yep. was all of this... This is what I, I can't get my head around. All of the information that's come out in Eddie's book and all the players who have since come out and said mm. uh, what transpired and how it affected yep. them uh, on a personal level... Did all that come out in the investigation? Well, Eddie, Eddie said it did. Eddie has said that it did. And, and as such, TJ, and even for the AFL this week, to put out a statement without attaching a name to a statement on the Wednesday and on the Thursday having an apology from Gillan McLaughlin, I mean, that's a significant change within 24 hours. The, the second action, the apology, was the right one and it probably should have come the day before. And then you've got the other layer of the AFL Players Association, which on the back of this being made public by Eddie Betts, only on the back of it being made public, are now wanting to, and they've said this themselves will now investigate and speak to all players listed at the Crows in that season four and a half years later. Now, I know there are impediments. I know there was a reluctance of some players to speak. But for Paul Marsh and others at the PA and people attached to the AFL at the highest levels to say that they weren't aware and we didn't know this information, well, just about every single media person of, of some note had, had a very good grasp of what was going on. And I think there was a, a tendency for some people, AFL, AFL-PA, to not want to look too hard and to not scratch too yeah, deep but let's not, the surface. Uh, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying about the media, but let's not worry too much about hurting our feelings. It's, it's 
it's the players uh, who are hurting at the yeah, moment. Yeah, and I heard, oh, Josh, I heard Josh Jenkins in his, uh, you know, his you know, statement. statement that he made, he said, afterwards he said, I'm not part of a uh, civil lawsuit at the moment, yeah. but I, may, I could be down the track. Mm. So you just mm. wonder how, how far this is going to go with the players. And Bryce Gibbs has jumped off the back now too, so how many more are going to come out against the club? All right, uh, plenty to play out there, Damo, and I know you're well on top of it. So uh, Damien Barrett there with his agenda.